dogs. We've come to think of them as man's best friend, but how much do you really know about your dog? To understand better how they communicate with each other and the roles they naturally fulfill in the wild, we need to explore the behavior of their nearest relative, the wolf. By focusing on the natural roles within a pack, we look at the way some people have abused certain breeds, leading them to becoming stereotyped and feared. Dogs aren't naturally, you know, no dog is born aggressive, we make them aggressive. From observing how wolves feed, we can see the same aspects of this behavior reflected in our own domestic dog, which can help us to understand the dog's social behavior in the park and in the home. I don't think dogs should ever be around small children because they still think of it as another human being and if uh, the child is there and it does something wrong accidentally it can still attack the child and you know exactly I'm an example. Although each of these wolves look very very similar they all have different jobs and different roles within the pack. These different roles and different jobs we can evidently see early on in our puppies when we choose them as domestic dogs. Unfortunately for many people, the misunderstanding of those jobs and what we choose can lead with disastrous consequences. Some dog owners fail to appreciate this connection with their wild relatives because they buy dogs primarily for their cosmetic looks or for some other specific attribute. This has led to some breeds becoming misconstrued as being aggressive dogs. If you take a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, for instance, um, it's got a bad reputation now. It was known as a nanny dog because it's so good with kids. You know, they are fantastic dogs. They're, they're a lovely breed. I've, I've worked with loads of staffies. Only one of one for, for aggression. And, and that, that aggression was because it had been beaten and abused when it was, uh, when it was young. And, um, you know, that, and that's a shame because people are now using them as, you know, I'm tough because I've got a tough dog, you know, and actually they're not, they're wimps, you know, because it's not a tough dog, you know, you're just abusing the dog. German Shepherds have also fallen victim to this stereotype of being aggressive. I think that the uh, German Shepherds make great family pets. As with all dogs, they do need uh, proper training to get to know where their place in the family is. Uh, German Shepherds are intelligent and loyal and they make some great pets. They integrate very well with the family. Uh, and the police dogs, all the police dogs that I know, they know when they're at work and they relax at home as well. A way for a highly powerful dog, such as a German Shepherd, to understand its social position in the family is during meal times, drawing upon the natural order in which wolves feed in the wild. Anybody looking in there with a domestic dog if you're wondering what the relationship to Tejas is here, to a domestic dog, this would be a classic of the pup that came rushing up to them when they went and selected one from a litter of other pups. That misguided loyalty that we see in them, that, that sense of the dog chose them rather than the other way around, is in fact this character or what it will grow into. A great big, powerful, strong animal geared towards the protection of the pack and more importantly, the alpha pairing within that pack which in here is Cheyenne and Natar, the two animals in the back of me. But if it's a family, it could be children, it could be the household itself, it could be the mother and father within that household. So again, we're seeing a slightly misguided loyalty from our dogs that's stemming from a natural instinct that they would have in the wild. We're gonna see probably a lot of cooperation between these two animals in the beginning until he comes into the, into the feeding routine and then you'll see the two males actually battling for that position. At the moment, we're getting T-Jazz here stripping off all the fur and exposing that movement meat or muscle meat, and that's gonna be predominantly his food source. Even though he's got the opportunity to eat these, he's leaving it alone. Again, there's total respect in one another and the food sources that they need to eat. Okay, the first principle of sending our food is the cover. So for me, because I haven't got those big ears that can be very expressive, I have to cover with elbows and just cover that portion of food completely. And if any of these guys comes too close, you're expected to defend in exactly the same way, using your weaponry, covering, growling, and then they've got the respect that you deserve. You can see how with the wolf world, 
how important this food actually is to them. And I think as dog owners, we fail to realize that protecting a food or protecting a certain quality of food ourselves gives us a very high respect level within our domestic dog. Most people would think, okay, if I eat a cup of tea, I drink a cup of tea or eat a biscuit in front of a dog, it's gonna make me more dominant, it's not. You look at the diet of these guys naturally, it's gotta be high quality that we're defending, not just everyday foods. But equally, if we do defend those foods for just a little while, it's a good way of earning respect with the animals themselves. So all he did was just cross the like, just cross that little bit of line there. I'm still guarding that area. So just lean slightly forward, take up the ground, let him know that he can't come any closer than that. Bringing this concept of how wolves feed into our domestic world makes it easier to understand why some dogs turn to aggression. Even though these two animals are most definitely dogs, they still have the wolf in them and that's displayed in their social positioning. Each one of these animals has an identification that's very important to them. And when it comes to things like even feeding off of this, there's one that's slightly more dominant than the other and that's respected at all costs. And this seems to be one of the most difficulties that people have understanding with their domestic dog. How two dogs that have been brought up in the same way and been domesticated to a high level can suddenly then turn into two fighting animals. And a lot of that is through their identity. They've been fed on the same food, they have very little to divide them. And often that misunderstanding of what we are often causes the fight itself. These animals are what we call or refer to as wolf hybrids. And although they look like wolves, they are in fact actually dogs. But these guys have retained an awful lot of their cosmetic look to the wolf. You can see that their body pattern, the darkness around their areas of communication, the facial weaponry and the mask, the backs and tips of the ears, and the hackles, that teardrop shape that runs down, actually defines them as more looking like a wolf than it does a dog. However, there are other breeds of dog that aren't quite so lucky, and in fact their ears go down, um, they have a blunt nose or something that looks quite wrinkled, and it makes it virtually impossible in some cases for those animals to communicate with other animals. So we do have to take, I think, an awful lot of responsibility in what we're breeding into dogs these days. And maybe, although we like the cosmetic looks, the fact is that we are actually losing a lot of their ability to communicate with one another and effectively us as well. Another concept that some owners overlook is how important it is for a dog to be properly socialised and not to deny them their natural communication. There are literally thousands of people across this country who will take their dog for a walk when they think nobody else is around. So they're taken out late at night, early in the morning, or if they go onto a park and they see other dogs, they'll turn around and go another way. And what happens is their dog gets very isolated. Dogs are very social animals, and they need to meet other dogs, and they need to meet other dogs all the time. If you deny your dog its ability to socialise with other dogs, due to a fear of aggression, it can in turn make your dog become unbalanced in some situations. When you get one owner and a dog meeting another owner and a dog, what happens is normally they'll stop and have a chat. That's one pack confronting another pack. If the dog's not balanced, it'll have a go. They've got time to stand and stare. Staring to a dog is the same as staring to a human. If I stare at you for too long, right, What's your problem, mate? You've got a problem with what you're staring at me for. You do that to anybody, and very quickly you can get into a very awkward situation. So when we're in the park, because we fear aggression and we misunderstand aggression, we do things to our dogs that kind of help, or doesn't help them to understand one another. We put muzzles on them, or halties that pull their weaponry in positions that may not be acceptable for that animal. Or Maybe we put them on leashes and hold them very tightly for fear of what's going to happen when they meet another animal. All of this, in our opinion, can actually hamper their ability to communicate with one another. And it's that lack of understanding on what aggression really is that really causes the problem in the first place. And it's not until we actually venture to our local forest or maybe even to the park when they're interacting with other dogs that we actually see that true natural instinct of the wolf coming out in the dog. But for us, it may be laying dormant for several hours a day but it's still very much evident. Dog, stop, stay in the dog.
The best way to train a dog is to use its natural instincts. Oh, you there, stand still. Stand still, don't make any sudden moves. Coda! It, it's easier to work with a dog's natural instinct than to work against it. Um, it it it's, makes it so much easier for the dog, there's less stress on the dog, and it's an easier thing to train for us. However, um, the dog has to, the natural instinct would be to chase and after its prey. So we do have to work in and keep the control on the dog against its natural instinct for safety purposes. Over recent years, the incidence of stories about dogs attacking children for no apparent reason has increased. One night after dinner, I went and I pet the dog and he was eating and all of the rest of my family, except for my mum who'd gone upstairs, were just still talking and still, you know, at dinner. And the dog, as he was thought I was stealing his food, he attacked me and he, his bite latched onto my cheek and I, all I just remember was just a, a lot of commotion. Uh, everyone started freaking out and they were pulling the dog off of me and he was just latching onto my face and just not letting go. And there was quite a lot of blood and when he finally let go, my dad just picked me up, put a towel on me and they went, we went straight to the hospital. Even to this day, I still think, when people look at me, they're probably staring at my scar, even though it's, I, even though I've had plastic surgery since, and it's gone down incredibly well. And it, it, you know, you can hardly notice it, but obviously, I have that sense that it's still there. Sean's research has enabled him to immerse himself with wolves in the wild. By doing this, he has learned not only how they feed, but also how they greet, socialise, and discipline each other through their social ranking which, within dogs, we can misunderstand as being aggressive. What I'm using with Cheyenne at the moment, what I'm using with Cheyenne at the moment is what we call a clock face greeting, where every wolf has a set position on one another that they can greet according to their rank or social position. And that coming under and nipping and that growling and that exchange means that she's either coming too low or too high in this case. The sad thing is, where our children are concerned, we don't understand this clock face or the way that we should greet another animal, both higher or lower in ourselves. And this can end in disastrous consequences for both the dog and the child. The dog disciplines the child for incorrect behaviour, but to us it's a bite. The dog ends up destroyed after maybe a brief appearance on most of our national newspapers, seemingly attacking the child for no apparent reason. The child probably ends up both mentally and physically scarred around animals for their life. This can all be avoided if we understood the mutual communication between the two parties. It is the responsibility of the dog owner to appropriately train the dog so it realises its position within the family. The way children behave around the dog should be supervised so they both understand each other without fearing aggression, which will lead to a healthy relationship and a happier dog. We've covered many different social positions within the wolf pack today and how that corresponds within the dog world. And I've been asked often, what's the best dog for me? How do I choose that animal? And although we have to take into specific needs of that family, whether it be a male or a female dog, whether it be an older dog or a puppy that they choose, my advice to them would be, as a first time owner, the numbers wolf or the numbers dog is often their best choice because it backs up a system and therefore needs less training or less advice on. How do we spot that animal within the group itself? It's usually there just to back up. So if we think about the first animal that's going to come to us as being the beta or the enforcer, the next one very close in line to that is going to be the alpha being protected by the beta or the enforcer. And then maybe we've got that tester animal making sure that everybody can be their job as number three. Usually the fourth line back is going to be our numbers wolf. Natural pressure is a good way to identify their natural positions. I often advise people to shake a set of car keys just at the appropriate moment, and then the pups fall into their social positions for a few seconds, and you can then pick the numbers very easily from that position. And as far as I'm concerned, it's more important to pick the right character for you than it is the cosmetic value of that animal. <laughs>